Hey guys, I'm Alex from Zaxworks, here to show you how to make shadows in 3D Pro Animator. So let's go ahead and get started. Right here I have my scene. I've got some words that are sitting on top of my floor. All they are is they're positioned higher up than my floor. Pretty simple. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a light and tell that light to cast shadows. So remember, this is real world 3D. So anything that is on top or in front of the other objects is going to cast the shadows onto the objects that are behind them. So let's go ahead and create a light. So first off, if we create a light just like this, notice our lighting in the scene has completely changed. We don't want that. Instead, we want the exact default lighting that we had before. We can do that. Let's go ahead and delete this light. Just by going up here to our lighting rigs, take this default lighting one and drag that onto our scene. So now notice that I have a light that is exactly the same as before, three lights actually, exactly the same lighting as before, except now I can manipulate those lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to my lighting workspace, this is where we're going to work to create all of our shadows, select our light one, and notice this is, this is the light that is uh, casting the light onto the front of our objects. And so I'll go ahead and turn that on, come down here and turn on shadow casting. And right there, notice over here we had shadow casting, turn that on, we now get real shadows um, being casted from our words onto our floor. Pretty simple, nice and easy, just like that. So look at those nice looking shadows. If you are not seeing these, please come up to the top menu bar. If you're in the standalone, click on 3D Pro Animator. If you're in the plugin, click on the help and you will see this preferences option. And the preferences option, make sure that show shadows in draft mode is turned on. If this is not turned on, you will not see the shadows in draft mode. This is turned off by default just for rendering speed. It can slow things down if you have too much in your scene. So just make sure that if this is turned on and your scene starts to go a little bit slower, you can turn this off for faster rendering time. Go ahead, click OK, and now we can see our, everyone should be able to see their shadows. Let's go over here to our object controls, our light settings, and see what we have to work with. So the first thing we have is our darkness. We can take it softer to darker. Pretty simple, you know, dark shadows, soft shadows, light shadows. Other thing we have is softness. This is for the edges of the shadows. If I take it super low, notice we have a very sharp shadows. And if we take it super high, notice we have very soft, rounded shadows. Nice and easy. If you are using the ray tracer, um, you are going to use this rays instead to do the softness. So if I have more rays and I switch over to my ray tracer, I'm going to have softer shadows um, around my object. So pretty simple how this all works. Um, just notice that the, the more rays you have and the more softness you have, the more rendering time it's going to take to render out your scene. So just a heads up. Uh, so I'm going to take that back down to nine rays. Um, let's keep that like that. Perfect. Um, also, notice if I zoom in here, and this is open only for OpenGL, but if I zoom in here onto my um, my floor right here, uh, the shadows look pretty decent. You know, they look pretty decent because I have 1500 shadow map size. Notice I went to my lighting globals, shadow map size. And if I take it down to 500, notice my shadows don't look as nice. Actually, let me go ahead and just delete this material delete that material and notice you can really see it now you see how how bumpy that looks very pixelated that's just because of the map size um, the smaller map size the faster rendering time uh, the bigger map size the slower rendering time uh, that's all it comes down to but you, the nicer it's gonna look if it's a bigger map size so if you're like zoomed out you probably can't even tell probably actually 500 isn't good so let's go like 1500 you can't really tell a difference but if you're super zoomed into your shadows and you can see the difference right there let's go ahead and bump it up to 4000 and you'll see it looks so nice and smooth um, that's however just keep in mind also it's gonna slow things down so if you wanna just bump it up to 4000 just for your final render that's what I recommend um, all right, so let's take that back down to 1500, zoom out. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to our second project. All right, so here in our second project, notice I have some words right here, and I have a back wall. That's all I have going on to the scene. I'm going to head and cast my shadows from the words onto the back wall. Um, and just like before, let's go ahead, let's take our default lighting, drag it into the scene, except this time I'm not going to apply the shadows to my light one. Instead, I'm going to do something even more special. I'm going to go ahead, uh, deselect all these guys, go up to the top track menu, click add light track, select our light, and I'm going to make this a shadow specific light. I'll do that by going over here and turning off cast light. 
So notice now that my light is not actually casting any light in the scene, except I'm going to turn on shadow casting. So now notice this light doesn't cast any extra light, but it casts shadows. So if I already have my lights already set up the way I want, and I want a specific light that will just cast the shadows, this is the way to do it. It's really nice and easy. And so now I can take my rotation, sort of move my rotation around, Let's move it down, maybe over to the right. And notice we're sort of getting this long shadow casting look that's super popular right now. And so if I take my darkness down a little bit, even take my shadow, shadow softness down a little bit, that's too much, there you go. Go ahead and click on render test. Notice that I have this really nice looking scene, extremely fast, without little to know about shadows. It's just there for me. So there you go. All right, that's it for the shadow tutorial. If you have any other questions, you can email us directly or leave a comment below this video. I'm Alex, and I'll see you next time.